As a young scientist, this is the adventure I've dreamed of all my life. An adventure like those I've read about in books, sailing off to faraway islands in the middle of nowhere. An island of extremes of every kind and an island full of animals that I've never seen before. The feeling of being more remote than ever before and the breathtaking scenery make this one of the best wilderness experiences that you can imagine. I'm Dr. Dean Miller, a lead scientist on the Fur Seal research team for the 61st Australian Antarctic Expedition to Macquarie Island. The fur seals here were pushed to extinction by the sealers in the 1800s. They're slowly returning and my job is to monitor the success of their breeding season and their long journey back to establishing sustainable colonies. Even a journey to the edge of nowhere has to start somewhere. And looking back at the city of Hobart, I'm excited beyond belief. I've no idea what to expect, and I've just spent my life savings buying a professional video camera to record each and every moment of this great adventure. We're going through a massive storm at the moment and it's blowing a gale outside and the waves are cresting up to about 14 metres and they just keep coming one after the other. It's really scary. Macquarie Island is a tiny speck of rock in the Great Southern Ocean, midway between Australia and the Antarctic continent. After three long days out in the ocean, I finally catch my first glimpse of Macquarie. I'm just so thrilled that far off on the starboard bow, I can now make out the snow-capped mountains. The ship only stops briefly to drop us off. She's on her way further south, but this is going to be my home for a year. When I told people I was going to live and work on Macquarie Island, most simply couldn't understand why. They thought I was crazy. It's cold, windy, wet and miserable most days. It's one of the most remote places on the planet and there are no shops or creature comforts. It's certainly not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, it's perfect. The research station was built in 1948 and is completely self-sufficient, and it has to be. In these 17 little buildings, we've got everything we need to survive all year round. One of the first things you notice when you arrive on the island are the elephant seals, and they're pretty hard to miss. That's because there are thousands of them along the beaches, but it's also because of their immense size, and some of the males can weigh up to four tons. But the only way to show you just how big these male elephant seals really are is to get close to one so you can see the size difference. I'm not gonna get any closer. On the way to our accommodation, 
we pass hundreds of seals and penguins, all who are going to share the station with us. Let me introduce you to some of the neighbours. Everywhere you look, there are elephant seals. The other thing you notice is the wind. The weather here is nothing short of extreme. While the summer temperatures range between about two and seven degrees Celsius, what makes this place really dangerous are the freezing cold winds. And today, they're gusting to well over 100 kilometers per hour. And even though I'm wearing lots of protective clothing, the wind is still cutting straight through me. These conditions are going to play havoc with my filming, let alone competing with the attentions of the neighbours. Getting ready to go out for the first time to my study site is really exciting. I can't wait. Before we go anywhere outside the station, we always sign ourselves out. I'm working with Tessa on the first seal project, and while it's only a couple of kilometres to our study site, it's a new experience for me. Every trek here seems to start with a hill, a big one. The daily commute to work is rugged and dangerous, but I never lose the wonder of where I am and what I'm doing. The first thing I do is find out who's on the beach. Number six, five, eight. Number P27. Fur seals have been tagged here for the last couple of decades, so we can track them over time. They know who's boss, and it's certainly not me. This is the breeding season, and the males will defend their territories fiercely, almost to the death. About 200 years ago, this beach would have been packed with fur seals. But the sealers came and in just 10 short years, over 200,000 were slaughtered for their fur. Their carcasses were simply thrown away. Well, I only had for the hood neck in it wasn't really working as well as I thought. Yeah, I, I think once you get them in there, then two of us should pull Physically pull pick them up. her up, yeah. yeah pick them up and make now them we're tracking the recovery of the species, and tagging individual seals is the only way we can study how their numbers are coming back. Loading up the tag trigger devices, put the tags in the flippers of the seals. This one's going to be number 855. It's like their personal little ID card hanging off their flipper.
and there's one more important job to do. And then the commute, back up and over the hills to the base. Getting off the beach isn't easy, and by the end of the season, I work out that I will have climbed Everest from sea level and back more than six times. Macquarie Island is like a living test tube of the Southern Ocean. From all the research that's being carried out here, we're able to get an idea of what's happening in the sub-Antarctic and the Antarctic, and every living thing here depends on the ocean for their survival. An elephant seal pup relies totally on its mother's milk for a month. Then it has to wait a few more weeks before it's ready to head out to sea and lots of them do that in the shelter of the station. Meet the wieners. These guys are the elephant seal pups and they can be found everywhere on station at the moment. But soon they'll go down to the water's edge and they'll start playing in the water and starting to learn what the water's all about and how they can move in it. <laughs> and then they'll be off and we won't see them again. And I'm really, really gonna miss them because I think they're the coolest little things. The shoreline is a dangerous place for young males, as it's the domain of the beach master. He is the blubbery king of the beach, guarding his harem from sneaky males looking to take advantage of his females behind his back. Females are loving the attention, but the beach master is having none of this. When he spots an intruder, it's on for young and old. The younger male beats a hasty retreat out to sea. Pups in the way can and do get trampled. He's not called the beach master for nothing. My research has me spending each and every day with the seal colonies, and throughout the breeding season, I document every move they make. Macquarie is unique among fur seal populations because now we find three species here, Antarctic, Subantarctic, and the New Zealand fur seal. But we're also recording interbreeding between species. Nature's reclaiming what it lost. This little guy is one of the uh, subantarctic hybrids, we think. He's got a different face to the other ones. And it's pretty hard not to fall in love with each and every one because they're the cutest little guys ever. Most pups are weighed several times to see how much weight they're putting on. This tells us how well they're developing, but also how well mum's doing her job. 12.2. And sometimes I forget that I'm a scientist and just enjoy the moment.
Being so close to the Antarctic, the weather here is totally unpredictable. It can snow at any time of the year. It's late spring, and for many newborn animals, it's an icy introduction to the world. Gentoo penguins have it easy. They huddle out of the wind, and there's always one parent to give them some shelter. But the rest just have to wait it out as the island turns briefly back into a winter wonderland. If you want to get anywhere on Macquarie, you have to hike. It's not easy. The ground is soft and boggy and every journey always seems to start with a hill and always into the wind. Nine times out of ten, the weather is horrible. And this makes going to work every day interesting to say the least. But I actually get a real kick out of going out in the foulest weather possible, pushing myself to the edge. Just as quickly as the storms come, they go. Not a moment is wasted when I've got my camera. I carry it everywhere and in every condition so I can capture exactly what it's like to be on this island in all its changing moods. I'm intrigued by the west coast. It takes the full brunt of the prevailing westerly winds and it's rugged and wild yet full of life. Just south of the base, there's a small colony of royal penguins, and Macquarie Island is the only place in the world where they breed. There are other colonies scattered up and down the island, but Bower Bay is where I see royals first. I love just sitting quietly watching as everything else in my life disappears and I just get totally lost in their world. Like almost every other bird on the island, the royals breed once a year. The males come ashore first and then the females, but they don't nest on the beach, they go inland and up into the hills. Sitting here watching these royal penguins march up and down this stream is a truly humbling experience. You kind of get the feeling that you've stumbled upon a scene from a fairy tale. It really is one of nature's magic moments. It's just incredible. Like traffic following some unwritten law, they waddle high into the mountains, over rocks and other obstacles. It looks like such hard work so tiring after returning from days fishing out in the Southern Ocean, to then have to climb a mountain with short little legs and a belly full of fish. Now that's tough.
Each bird has its own little territory and a nest made from small stones that they sometimes steal from other penguins and then they line it with grass. Often a pair will take the same nest site year after year. Once the egg is hatched, the male stands guard for three to four weeks while the female makes short fishing trips. Skewers constantly patrol the colonies, looking for an easy meal. But this is only a small colony. The mother of all colonies, in fact, the biggest in the world, is at the southern tip of the island and I am so determined to see it before my time on Macquarie is up. But right now, there's fun to be had. A welcome day off work. We might be closer to the South Pole than the North Pole, but somehow Santa still finds his way to Macquarie Island. Christmas is a time when our Macca family joins together and we just have fun. Christmas time. Is that big enough for me? Oh, it's yours. Holy bejesus. Someone's playing a trick. Oh my freaking god. Very similar. <laughs> 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 it's the same. <laughs> And even if there aren't lights on a Christmas tree down here, there are other lights that glitter and mean just as much. Boxing Day is back to work. Even though this becomes routine, it's something I never tire of. Previous expeditions built a small hut that saves us carrying gear up and down every day. All this to just try and read the number on a microchip that was implanted when these seals were pups. But this is what my job's all about. Tiny pieces of information that build into a bigger picture and it's going to help save a species. Isolated and remote as we are, Macquarie Island is also just a tiny part of a much bigger picture. Even down here, almost as far from anywhere as you can get, there are reminders that we are still part of the world. On our way to work this morning, we came up over the hill and I could see this huge white shape out in the ocean. Clearly a massive, massive object. We got the binoculars out and sure enough, it's the biggest iceberg. Well, the first iceberg I've ever seen. It's about as big as two container ships side by side and it's just incredible. This berg must have come from the Antarctic ice shelf, but there wasn't just one. More and more kept drifting up from the south.
In the last three weeks, over 40 icebergs have been spotted from the island. The biggest of them was over two kilometres long. And just to give you an idea of how rare this event actually is, there's only ever been a handful of icebergs recorded from here since the island was discovered in 1810. After floating 1,500 kilometres from the Antarctic continent, We've had an iceberg run aground here about a kilometre offshore. Now the waves are starting to break it up, which is why we're seeing all these little bits and pieces of ice, or bergy bits as they're called, wash up on the beach. And the most incredible thing is that when you pick one of these things up and take a good look, you can see tiny, tiny gas bubbles trapped. And if you listen very closely, you can actually hear them start to release. You just don't get ice any more pristine than this. This ice is going to be the perfect thing in our drinks at the bar tonight. 20,000 year old ice cubes. It doesn't get much better than that. there is a dark side to the island. With so much life, there's also the flip side. One elephant seal has died and another stays close, even as the giant petrels become vultures. It's so true what they say. Where there is life, there is death. And down here, when anything dies, it means life for something else. Macquarie is a cruel and unforgiving place. It's heartbreaking to watch an orphan seal pup slowly starve to death. All I want to do is help, but I can't. It's not my place to intervene, and that's hard. But death certainly isn't confined to the beaches. There's no safety in the water either. Pods of orca come to the island and patrol up and down, close in shore. These killer whales are intelligent. They know when and where to come. On the other hand, the seal pups are young and naive. But there's nothing I can do. There are millions of animals born in Macquarie each year, and each year some of these will never leave the island. But there is a much more dangerous predator who has left his mark. These are the digesters, or large boiling vats, that were used to process the carcasses of hundreds of thousands of seals and penguins to extract their oil and fat. Thankfully, this is all that's left of an industry that was well on its way to destroying the marine life on the island. When the island was declared a nature reserve in 1920, thanks to the petitioning of Sir Douglas Mawson, the killing gang simply upped and went after over a hundred years of slaughter, leaving their machines and the bones of their victims. 
but the sealers left behind another legacy, rabbits. They were brought down as a source of fresh food and soon the rabbits lived up to their reputation and there were tens of thousands of them. Predators did get rid of a few, but it was a drop in the ocean. They've done so much damage that some of the ground nesting birds stop breeding altogether and around the island you can still see massive areas of erosion where nothing can grow. In a remarkable win for conservation, there are now thought to be less than 30 rabbits left on the island and there's a concerted effort to find and eradicate every last one. Given time, the vegetation will return and Macquarie will be rid of one more reminder of a past that will soon just be history. Finally, I get the okay to take my long anticipated trek down to the very southern tip of the island, to the largest royal penguin colony on earth. We leave the station equipped for a 10 day hike there and back. I want to be tested, I want to know exactly what I can endure. But right now for me, it's all about the hike. The sun is actually shining and the sea is calm as we come to the first of our overnight stops. The hut looks like a spaceship, but it's got everything we need for the night and indeed to survive longer if the weather turns nasty. So, uh, yeah, we'll be keeping our eyes out for auroras. I was looking last night, but no luck at all. Over. The next day, the weather does change, and from a rare day of calm, the change is for the worse. Tessa and I aren't prepared for the extreme hardship we are about to face. It's hard work, really demanding of every part of body and mind, perhaps more mind. The wind chill drops the temperature to minus 10 and even lower. Our muscles start to cool, despite the fact we're working like draft horses. We're becoming slow and stiff in the conditions, maybe even the onset of hypothermia. This is the first time in my life when I realise I can actually die from what I'm doing and it scares the hell out of me. This is when you really work out who you are, what you're made of and how much you can endure. After eight hours, the only option is to keep going and never stop. To stop is to get even colder. There's no turning back. Well, I think that was probably one of the most mentally and physically demanding things I've just about ever done. It was unbelievable. But we made it, we kept pushing on, and now we're here. Stopping at Green Gorge gives us the chance to meet some of the locals. 
These are the king penguins, the largest of the penguin species that breed on Macquarie. They strut around like royalty and show absolutely no fear of us. It's the best feeling in the world to just sit in the open and be surrounded by wildlife. Because of their size, these birds have a completely different breeding strategy to the other penguins on the island. It takes the kings a complete year to raise their chicks, and that means at best they breed every second year. And even here, there are reminders of those killing days. Once the seals were gone, kings were the favourite target as they're big, and there were a few more drops of oil from each bird. It's hard for me to grasp what a huge impact this must have had on the populations. But the numbers have come back and the chicks look like little yetis. Their fluffy down feathers will give them a chance to survive the bitter winter storms. It's hard to believe they're going to turn into spectacular adults with bright colours and streamlined bodies. This is such a wild and remote place, and everywhere you look there's life, not just on this beach, but even in the rocks that act as a boundary with the hills. Rock Upper penguins are the rock stars of the beach, not just because they look the part, but because they really do hop over the rocks. Well, sometimes. Like all the penguins on the island, the rockhoppers breed in the early spring. After being at sea, often the same pair will mate and use the same nest site each season. When the chicks are old enough, they crash together for protection. This allows both parents to go to sea to fish. Even so, there are always a few adults to keep a watch out. This time, the spirited little penguins chase away the skewers. Attitude definitely pays off in these flamboyant birds. The penguins are only a brief interlude and we push on for the south. We're each carrying 20 kilos and there's another huge day of hiking ahead. It all starts off well, but it doesn't take long for the weather to turn bad again. Icy squalls blow off the Southern Ocean, drenching us and chilling us to the bones. from the station, which means at best, medical help is about three days away. This is certainly not the kind of place you want to hurt yourself.
but as quickly as the squalls blow in, they blow out again. And by the time we reach the southern tip of the island, the weather has cleared. After three days of hiking through the elements, we've finally reached the most southern tip of the island. But Herd Point, our final destination, is just down this hill and there's only one way to get there. Herd Point is simply stunning, and no stretch of coast I have ever seen comes close to this incredible rocky shore. Thousands of elephant seals, albatross, giant petrels and gulls, but it's the colony of royal penguins that takes my breath away. I'm literally surrounded by noise and by the bustle of life. What makes this little piece of coastline so important is that royal penguins breed nowhere else on Earth except here on Macquarie, and this colony is the biggest in the world, here on the edge of nowhere. but there are still rules to be obeyed, especially when the inhabitants are crammed together like this. A penguin trying to get to the sea for a fishing trip runs the gauntlet of beaks from other birds that feel their little bit of space is being invaded. This little stretch of coast, which is about one kilometre long, has more animals on it than I've ever seen anywhere else on Earth. If you look to the skies, you can see hundreds of albatross, skewers, gulls and giant petrels all circling around on the wind. On the beach are three and a half tonne elephant seals fighting for the right to mate. There are king penguins living up to their name and strutting around just like they own the place. But for sheer numbers alone, the most impressive sight are the royal penguins. And here at Herd Point, there are over one and a half million of them. The sound is just incredible. Down here, the days are long. But dusk comes too early and we retreat to the warmth of the hut. I know what you're thinking, but after today, this tastes really, really good. Yum. The penguins go on all night, but I'm so exhausted, it just sends me off to sleep. The noise doesn't let up, not for a moment, and I can't wait to get outside and into the middle of it again. For the next two days, I've got the chance to be a part of all this, and everywhere something is happening. But the best part is that I have the luxury of time to look at the finer details of life down here. Because of their sheer size, 
elephant seals always demand my attention. The fights are often over quickly and injured pride can be massaged with a bellow. Young males play fight in the surf to an unappreciative audience of king penguins. Along the beachfront, basking elephant seals are the first obstacle for incoming royal penguins, all they need after days out at sea fishing. It's amazing to watch the Gentoo chicks as they also navigate their way through the elephant seals. And if you think your neighbours are annoying, just try bringing up a family at Herd Point. With so many animals crowded together, there's always going to be opportunities. Seal milk is incredibly rich in fats and a skewer isn't going to let this chance drip away into the sand. And then I spot something really unusual. It looks like a male elephant seal has picked a fight with a leopard seal. There can only ever be one winner. Macquarie Island stands alone at the end of the world in a cold and furious ocean and is one of the planet's last remaining mass wildlife spectacles. This summer, over four million penguins, seals and seabirds will crowd its shores and makes me wonder whether life might have existed like this everywhere once upon a time. In these modern times, we are seeing species disappearing from existence every single day, but Macquarie Island gives me hope. Species that are here today have returned from the brink of extinction and are reclaiming the island as their own. And the fur seals that I've spent my time down here studying are just one example. Even though their return from the brink of extinction is slow, it is happening and the fact that I've played a part in that return is something I will always treasure.
My time on Macquarie is coming to an end and it's going to be sad to leave, even though I'm looking forward to being home. But I'm leaving with hope, knowing that there are still wild places left on Earth where the rhythms of life continue without interference. And in the end, that's what will save Macquarie and the wildlife that depends on it. The fact that it's far from the modern world and completely isolated at the edge of nowhere. <laughs>